Like I said to the church the other day, that the black caucus of ministers wrote me three letters. They wanted to make sure I get it, so they sent three big letters to the church with about three or four pages of a petition signed mm. by so many preachers in the country mm -hmm. to mediate, to have a meeting. Want to mediate between me and Jake the Snake. The Congressional Black Caucus, recognizing the potential for division within the black church, took the significant step of intervening in the ongoing conflict between Geno Jennings and T.D. Jakes. This intervention was marked by the dispatch of three carefully crafted letters, each accompanied by a petition signed by preachers from across the nation. The objective of these letters was clear, to urge Geno Jennings to engage in a dialogue with T.D. Jakes, emphasizing the importance of unity and the need for constructive mediation to resolve their theological differences. The content of the letters was meticulously detailed and compelling, designed to resonate with both Jennings and his supporters. They highlighted the shared goals of both Jennings and Jake's ministries in uplifting the black community, stressing that, despite their differences, both leaders were ultimately working towards similar ends. The letters called for a meeting that would foster understanding and promote harmony, underscoring a collective desire for resolution. This call to action was not merely about resolving a personal dispute, but about setting an example for the broader community on how to handle disagreements within the church. The petitions that accompanied these letters were a powerful testament to the widespread support for this initiative. Signed by numerous preachers from various denominations and regions, these petitions reflected a broader concern for maintaining unity within the church. The signatures represented a diverse cross-section of the religious community all of whom recognized the potential impact of a unified front in addressing the theological rift between Jennings and Jakes. This widespread support added weight to the Congressional Black Caucus's request, making it clear that this was not just the wish of a few, but a collective plea from the wider religious community. I started to tear the letters up, mm -hmm. but I said, no. <laughs> now I'm gonna use this time if they're serious about coming to the table, right. I'm gonna use this time, bring our ministers, some of our brothers, and we're gonna strike this out with scripture. That's right. That's, that's, that's what we want to do. That's right. We wanna strike this out with scripture. Amen. Prove the fact Prove it. that the church can coexist with homosexuality. Right. Prove it. Prove it. Prove the fact that a man of God is evolving towards what? homosexuality. My Lord, my Lord. Known for his firm and often uncompromising stance on theological issues, Jennings was initially inclined to discard the letters, dismissing the idea of mediation. His disagreement with Jake's theology was profound, and the notion of engaging in a dialogue with someone whose beliefs he considered fundamentally flawed seemed unappealing. Jennings' resistance stemmed from a deep conviction that certain theological positions were non-negotiable, and engaging in dialogue could be perceived as compromising his principles. Jennings' initial reaction was to tear up the letters a symbolic gesture that underscored his strong opposition to what he perceived as theological deviations represented by Jake's. However, this reaction was also marked by an internal conflict. Jennings understood the gravity of the situation and the significance of the Congressional Black Caucus's intervention. The widespread support reflected in the petitions coupled with the potential for positive outcomes prompted him to evaluate the situation more carefully. Amen. So I started to tie the letters up, but I changed my mind. I talked to Dan early in the week. I said, yeah, call him. Mm -hmm. let's, let's come to the table. Let's, let's strike this out with Bible. That's right. I mean, if the black caucus get wrong, then I'll get a hold of them with the Bible. That's right. I don't care who you are. Pastor Amen. Jennings don't care what degrees you hold. I don't care what college you went to. That's right. I don't care how popular you are. That's right. Anybody from the Black Caucus side with homosexuality, I take God's word and beat you asunder like anybody else. That's right. Amen. Recognizing the importance of unity 
and the potential impact of constructive dialogue, Jennings decided to accept the invitation extended by the Congressional Black Caucus. This decision marked a pivotal shift in his approach, symbolizing a willingness to engage in meaningful dialogue despite his strong theological convictions. Jennings realized that resolving conflicts through biblical principles and dialogue could set a powerful example for the broader community. This change of heart was not merely about agreeing to a meeting. It was about embracing the opportunity to bridge divides and foster understanding. Jennings decided to use this platform to bring his ministers and brothers to the table, aiming to resolve differences with scripture. This approach highlighted his commitment to upholding biblical truth while seeking reconciliation. Central to the dialogue was the use of scripture. Both Jennings and Jakes grounded their arguments in biblical teachings, seeking to resolve their differences through a shared commitment to the Bible. Key biblical principles discussed included the nature of the prosperity gospel, the role of women in the church, and the importance of holiness and moral integrity. You get what I'm talking? Amen. Go ahead, man. I often think of the scripture where the Lord asks the question, who will stand up Who for me? Who will stand for me? Who will? That's right. Somebody in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Had to stand up for God. That's right. Who's not swayed by money and popularity and notoriety, but just stand up. That's right. Flat footed for God. That's right. Go ahead. Brother. You preachers are an embarrassment. Yes. Oh, yeah. You are a disgrace to God's word. That's right. You, your wives, and everything else. Amen. Amen. You have no respect for God, and you just play church. Put playing. And the followers been participating in this Sesame Street version of church That's for right. so long. That's right. Until they accept it as God's anointing. That's right. Sesame Street version of church got big bird for bishops and grover for elders and amen snuffle up against for deacons that's right and oscar from the trash can on the mother's board amen the use of scripture not only provided a common ground for the discussions but also highlighted the depth of their theological commitments by focusing on biblical foundations jennings and jakes were able to engage in a dialogue that was both respectful and rooted in their shared faith. Reflections from Jennings, Jakes, and the Congressional Black Caucus highlighted the significance of the meeting. Jennings emphasized the importance of scripture in resolving differences, while Jakes spoke about the power of unity and collaboration. Members of the Congressional Black Caucus reflected on the broader implications for the black community, emphasizing the need for ongoing dialogue and mediation. Community reactions were largely positive, with many expressing support for the efforts to foster unity. Media coverage highlighted the significance of the meeting, portraying it as a landmark event in the quest for unity within the Black Church. The dialogue between Jennings and Jakes, facilitated by the Congressional Black Caucus, was seen as a testament to the power of mediation and the importance of addressing theological differences constructively. In conclusion, the intervention of the Congressional Black Caucus in the conflict between Geno Jennings and T.D. Jakes underscores the importance of unity and constructive dialogue within the Black Church. The letters, petitions, and eventual meeting facilitated by the caucus exemplify a commitment to resolving differences through biblical principles and mediation. Jennings' change of heart and willingness to engage in dialogue highlight the potential for positive outcomes when leaders prioritize unity and understanding. This event serves as a powerful example for the broader community, demonstrating that even deeply held theological differences can be addressed through respectful and meaningful dialogue.